Okay, this is uh, part one of Dump Trump, and it's going to be on tax reform. Because I'm trying to, like, do things in the same order. I said Dump Cruise, and I use tax reform as a main reason. Not necessarily because of it by itself, but it shows the candidate's approval of ideas, which tells you how the candidate thinks, and conversely, um, tells you what the can how stupid the candidate is. All right. Now Trump, like Cruz, has a very bad web designer. Okay, I'm at Trump's website, as you can see in the upper right-hand corner. I had to override the colors. Okay, always override them, so that I can actually read what his website says, because in its native color, it's like faded gray. That's all the rage now with websites, whether it's Google or Vimeo or some other creepy place. Is they're all lightening the font so that it's, you know, light gray on white. As if it were cool to have to squint to read the screen, which means most people are going to go blind twice as fast. Okay, so, you know, fire Trump's web designer right away. Okay, because I have to override the colors in order to be able to read it at all. Here is Trump's tax plan, and he, oh, he just pitches it. Of course, that's his, that's what Trump is famous for. He's a salesman. Salesmen are paid to lie. Okay, there are many different kinds of lies. One of them is to exaggerate. And you can exaggerate in two directions. You can minimize or look over or what do you want to call it ignore what's wrong and the other side of exaggeration is to make something that's good bigger than it really is that's where Trump's big lie is here when I see somebody lie right away I know uh, -uh. now with Trump my argument against him is that he's not presidential he, he, he's like one great big bundle of stereotypes. He's the brash version of the movie Being There, starring Peter Sellers. A link will be in the video description. Where Peter Sellers was exalted, the character he's playing, was a gardener who only watched TV and knew nothing about anything outside of his garden. And his master dies, and he ends up being thrown out of the house because he's just the gardener and he's wandering around he gets into an accident and some rich people had hit him and so the way he talks makes the rich people who are clueless and liberal of course think that he's the greatest thing since white bread that's the basic premise of the movie it's very funny it's very good I bought it so Donald Trump is like that character in that movie, except that Peter Sellers' character in the movie, Being There, is really nice. You can get it on Amazon. Peter Sellers' character is really nice. Donald Trump, he, he, he plays the ugly American. He either is or plays the ugly American who thinks only in stereotypes that you see on TV. And that's the way he talks to people in real life, too when he's trying to recruit them for voting for him. So he's just like the character in Being There that Peter Sellers played, except he's a nasty version. He's, he's what everybody in the 1950s used to call the ugly American. Full of prejudices, full of stereotypes, full of sound bites, and no actual sense. This is not somebody you elect to be the representative of your entire country. The president is supposed to be like the embodiment of everything America holds dear. Even though we don't live up to our standards, we need somebody as a leader who represents the standards to the rest of the world and to us. Okay, We need an ideal person. And that was one of the things that made Reagan and Bush, even though we had lots of criticism of them, that's what made them endearing, is they didn't have internal 
political scandals. Okay, there were scandals, but for the most part, the scandals that were there were started by underlings, okay, where it was really obvious the underlings were acting on their own volition. And th those scandals weren't too many, actually. With Trump, it would be worse than that because Trump is so clueless. He's not only clueless, but he's, he's, he's run by stereotypes. And what makes this so clear besides all of his statements, I mean, you don't get in front of blacks and tell them that you like Kentucky Fried Chicken, too. You don't get in front of Jews and say, hi, I'm a negotiator and you guys are negotiators. That's not how you talk to people. You don't talk to them based on their stereotypes, as if those stereotypes were true of them. You might as well be punching them in the nose. Okay? That's how Trump acts. That's what he is. That's what he thinks woos people. And so all the people who are stupid like him, and there are unfortunately quite a number, vote for him. All right? Now I want to show you how stereotypical this guy is. He, if you hear him talk, and there's a video here, Okay, that will be in the video description. You hear him talk about his tax plan versus here's what the tax plan actually is at his own site. You're going to see, oh, wow, this is two different things. Okay, now look. Well, here's what he says to, to pump it. Too few Americans are working. Too many jobs have been shipped overseas. And too many middle class families cannot make ends meet. The tax plan directly meets these challenges with four simple goals. Now let me, before I go into those goals, let me tell you something. There is no tax plan. None. Zero. No tax plan is going to bring back jobs that are overseas. I don't care if you cut the taxes to zero. Middle class families that cannot make ends meet, there's no tax plan that can help them make ends meet. None. Zero. The same argument has been used, you know, by the Republicans for 50 years. See, it's a stereotype argument that he's using. So it's total ignorance about what the problem is that we have in the United States. Okay? Jobs have been shipped overseas for more reasons than taxes. Okay, it's not just taxes. There are a lot of other problems. But he's saying, oh, this tax, tax plan is going to meet the challenges of what? Jobs shipped overseas? Too many middle class families that cannot make ends meet? He doesn't understand what those problems are. Because a tax plan cannot meet those challenges. It can't. The purpose of any kind of tax plan is to stimulate the economy. When a government taxes you, it's going to turn right around and spend the money that it gets. That's going to stimulate the economy one way. If, on the other hand, you reduce taxes, then instead of having the government stimulate the economy, you're going to have the people who have the reduced taxes stimulate the economy and however they vote to spend their money. So it's a philosophical difference. But in either event, I want you to understand, this is the same money. You're directing where that money goes. The, the taxes you pay, if you pay them, they go to the federal government who spends them instead of you. The government ideally will spend them in some beneficial way for the sake of the country. Okay? Of course, it doesn't. That's why I'm a fiscal conservative. All right? I'm a, a drastic fiscal conservative for this very reason. Everything the government touches turns to doo-doo, so the more money you send it, the worse it gets. Okay? The, re the flip side is if the taxes instead are cut, so less money goes to the government, then more money stays with you, and then you vote how you spend your money. Now, I don't know anybody who wouldn't agree with wanting to spend their own money their way. 
Because maybe you're a Muslim and I'm not. And you want to support Muslim causes with your money and I don't. And the government sure won't. Or it will and I won't like it and you will. So then I'm going to be madder at you for being a Muslim. You see how silly this is? What you want to have is the lowest tax possible. But even with the lowest tax possible, that is not going to solve the problem of jobs that have been shipped overseas. And that's not going to solve the problem of middle class families who cannot make ends meet. Those are due to other causes. Taxes can help, but they can't solve it. So then this is a flat false statement. This tax plan directly meets these challenges. It does not meet the challenges. It cannot meet the challenges. The challenges are due to things other than taxes. Period. Okay? Taxes simply directs where your money goes. Who decides where the money gets spent? Do you decide it or does the government? If you pay tax, the government is doing the deciding. And if you're a Democrat, you think that the government is smarter than you. I've never seen a government be smarter than me. So I don't like this. I want my taxes low. And I decide where the money goes. And I'll bet you do too whether you think you're smart or dumb. Okay? In either event, obviously... Donald Trump doesn't know the first thing about what taxes are and what they do. Period. The guy's incompetent. Okay? You can, you can get rich and be stupid. I know a lot of stupid rich people. Okay? Rich and, and smarts don't necessarily fit together. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It's like anything else. You can be rich and bad, you can be rich and good. You can be rich and stupid, you can be rich and smart. You can be rich and sick, you can be rich and well. Okay, there's just it's like it's all over the map. Money, having money, doesn't say anything about you. Okay, it can't. It's a thing. It's the same same idea. So so, what this plan says about Donald Trump is he didn't have first clue about what taxes are for. They do stimulate the economy. It's a question of which way. Given to the government and the government does it? Or given to you and you do it? Republicans, generally speaking, do not trust the government to spend the money well, so they want taxes cut. It never solves this problem, and it never solves this problem. All taxes are designed to hit the middle class the hardest. That is the policy of the United States for the past 200 years. The tax system, when it was first decided and designed, was designed to hit the middle class the most. Because the middle class is the biggest portion. Okay, You have very few at the top who are rich, and frankly, you have very few at the bottom who are poor. The middle class is the most numerous. So where's the money going to come from if you tax? It's got to come from the middle class because the poor are too poor to pay the tax. You see the point? So he can't solve the problem with any tax plan because every tax plan is designed around the middle class most. You got that. All right, now let's look. Tax relief for middle class Americans. Doesn't say what it is. He's just waving the flag there. Okay? Simplify the tax code to reduce headaches Americans face in tax. This is the same stupidity that Ted Cruz uses. Okay? He doesn't do his own taxes, so he doesn't understand. The taxes he pays are, are lower, lower, because the tax code is not simplified. When, you simpl when they say simplify the tax code, what they mean is remove your ability to deduct. Like if you're a human being, an individual income earner, you get certain deductions off your taxes, like for your mortgage interest, like for your medical expenses, like for certain educational expenses. And every single year, the Congress changes the rules a little bit, and you you know you have to find out from your tax guy, okay, what can I deduct to lower my income taxes? If you simplify the tax code, you will not be able to lower your income taxes. So simplifying the tax code is not helpful to the middle class. It's not helpful to the upper class, and it's not helpful to the lower class. 
Lower class don't have much to deduct, but there are some deductions that they get. So the headaches Americans face in preparing their taxes. What? You know how much it costs to prepare your taxes? You could do it yourself if you did your homework because the tax forms we got are real easy to fill out. Okay, all you have to do is just pay attention to the wording. The IRS has done a really good job of making the tax forms easy to understand. It's not like it was 10 years ago. So the last thing you want is for a simplified tax code because that will raise your taxes. The same problem that Ted Cruz has. He doesn't understand tax code either. So both Donald Trump and Ted Cruz are stupid people. Okay, they don't do their own taxes, so they don't know how the structure works. Okay, they don't even consult the people who do taxes because the people who do taxes will tell you what I'm telling you right now. I do taxes for a living. Okay, and I would very much, in fact, that within a year or two, I'm going to be retiring. I would very much not like to have this job. You simplify the tax code, you say, well, brain up, then you won't have a job. Fine. God will hire me to do something else. i got other skills. I hate my job. But I've been doing it for 30 years, and people depend on me, so i got to keep doing it. Okay, this is dumb. And you know what? 40 years ago, they were saying the same thing. I was on Capitol Hill 40 years ago. They were, well, not 40 40, 35, I was like, 20, no, maybe 40, 22. Okay, I was on Capitol Hill 40 years ago. The same stuff that you're looking at on screen now were issues then. So guess what? All of this statement that he's making is stereotyped. It's been said every year since, let's see, I'm 62 now. I was 40, I was 22 then when I was on Capitol Hill. I wasn't a legislative aide or I didn't have a public office or anything. I was just working with people who did. See? These were issues then. Okay, now watch. Item number three. Grow the American economy by discouraging corporate inversions. Do you know how sophisticated a concept that is? Okay. First of all, there aren't very many corporate... Oh, I don't know. This is the same thing Cruz was talking about. So he, he and Cruz are saying the same thing. And corporate inversion is basically a way of, it's hard to explain, making money and avoiding taxes by sort of flipping who is the taxed entity. Okay, there aren't very many corporations practicing that because there's a lot of ins and outs and it's heavily regulated. So when it says here, grow the American economy by discouraging corporate inversions. First of all, how much growth are you going to have when, when it's like 1% or 2% of the economy is even subject to this? How much growth is that going to create? be optimistic to say one or two percent adding a huge number of new jobs huge number by what standard couple of hundred couple of thousand it's just not going to help this is a small item small line item shouldn't even be mentioned okay and then say D doesn't add instead of don't add don't add to our debt and deficit, which are already too large. There's no way they can do that. This is totally impossible, item number four. Absolutely impossible. You know why? 50% of our debt is sourced in Social Security, which we can't change. We've been trying for 40 years. I talked about that before in the Dump Cruise video. I was on Capitol Hill again four years ago. They were trying to simplify and change and get Social Security to be funded 40 years ago. Guess what? In 40 years, this hasn't happened. It's not going to happen now. The other main component of the 50% of our actual, what do you want to call it, total budget 
is the military. And there's obviously no way we can give that up because we're under attack. Basically, the, the strategy we have as the United States is that we're going to go bring the war to them. That's what George Bush stated, W. We're going to bring the war to them. Okay, well, then we have to have a, 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 an updated military. And at the time he said that, we didn't have an updated military. Okay? That was the problem. Okay? The Clintons had pretty much wrecked our military. So, you know, to sit here and say, don't add to our debt, there's no way we can't add to the debt. Because it's already there. Okay, the interest alone, we can't pay. The interest on our debt is so high, we can't pay it. We have to keep issuing bonds. Well, that adds to the principal amount of the debt. So item number four means that Trump has zero idea. He's just saying what you want to hear. The, uh, the items number one, two, three, and four, hopefully I've just explained and you can think over. Oh, wow, this guy's talking out of his nose. It's not even possible what he's saying to be true. But we're going to go on. The Trump tax plan achieves these goals. No, it doesn't. It achieves nothing. Okay, now watch. If you are single and were earn less than $25,000 or married and jointly earn less than fifty, dollars you will not owe any income tax. In Cruz's plan, the, the, the threshold amount is $36,000. Ooh. Now, honey, it's already nearly like that now, 25 and 50. Okay, and, you know, after deductions and everything, it's already like that now. I mean, it's not exactly that, but you've got so many deductions you can use that you, you can actually achieve the same result now under current tax law. So how is Trump's plan really all that better? Cruz's plan would set the, the limit at 36, but he wants to remove all deductions so that you end up paying more tax. Since this guy, Trump, is talking about simplifying the tax code also, if he removes the deductions, then you can actually be paying more tax once you get over the 25000 versus what you pay now. Okay? Just like Cruz, Trump would say, oh, I get a one-page form to IRS and, and blah, blah, blah. This is a big lie. One-page form, I win. Really? If it's a one-page form, honey, first of all, you can pretty much do that now. On the 1040, if you get the 1040 EZ. And the second thing is that you it's, it's not a savings of $1,000 each. If you're taking out all the deductions, think about the number of deductions that you can get right now. Your mortgage interest, educational expenses, um, health care. That's thousands and thousands of dollars in deductions that he would remove. So how are you saving $1,000 each? How come you're not paying at least $1,000 more? Okay. So whoever's coming up with this, what this tells me is that not only is Trump himself un you know, uninformed, and totally unrealistic, and this is like the, what he's saying here is supposed to be realized by this tax plan. He doesn't. He doesn't know what this is saying. Somebody invented it, and he's not even watching. He's not even paying attention. And so that means you, would, if you elected Trump, you would be relying on his advisors, and his advisors are, are patently incompetent. Okay, just patent. On that level alone. Now, take a look at what follows. I'll roll this up a minute. I need to get some more soup. I made a soup out of um, 
canned pumpkin and curry spice. It's really good. Wait a minute. If you want to know the soup recipe, it's um, one, you know, 29 ounce can of canned pumpkin like Libby's. Um, two more cans of, you know, after you've dumped it in the pot, uh, two more cans that you fill with water. And then about, ooh, at least two tablespoons of, you know, Indian curry seasoning. I use the Madras kind that's actually Arabic. But I'm not sure that that's actually better. Indian style would be better, but I couldn't find it. Um, like I said, two cans of water. And then um, garlic to taste. Indian um, Italian seasonings to taste. And about at least two tablespoons of oil or um, Crisco, Crisco butter flavor. And then you let that simmer for a long time, like all day. And it's really good. So much for that. Now let's get back here. All other Americans will get a simple tax call with four brackets instead of the current seven. Okay. Every single presidential candidate has a plan like this. Every single one of them. Jeb Bush's, I don't think the percentages are exactly the same, but they're close. And the way he's wording it, it's as if he's copying what Jeb Bush wrote in his own tax plan. Okay. When it says here, this new tax code eliminates the marriage penalty and the alternative minimum tax. Yeah. By the way, this almost verbatim, either Cruz copied from Trump or Trump copied from Cruz also. While well, providing the lowest the lowest tax rate since before World War II. Yeah, and Jeb Bush's it's the same thing. He's saying it's the lowest the lowest tax rate since Reagan. Okay, but here's the thing, and this is the same thing I'm, I, as I had said before about Cruz. If you're eliminating the deductions, these brackets are actually higher in tax for the middle class higher in taxes, higher, because you're eliminating the deductions, okay? When you, when you do most tax returns for middle income with the deductions, what he's showing there is the four brackets. It's actually a little bit lower under the current tax law is a little bit lower than what you see in number two on screen. Talk to your accountant about this okay I mean you know it's like hi if you got ten thousand dollars in deductions so now your income is ten thousand dollars less the average statement there is that you're saving thirty five percent of taxes so you just save thirty five hundred dollars in tax so then you take the net tax that you're actually paying to the gross income you actually made and it's usually a little bit less than what you see on screen so he's not reducing the tax. Plus, he's just copying what everybody else says. And they're not really reducing the tax either, Cruz in particular. Okay, but, you know, Rand Paul, Jeb Bush, they all got the same statements. All of their tax proposals, the whole lot of the GOP candidates are the same pretty much percentage or two different. They're almost like copies of each other. Okay? No business of any size from a Fortune 500 to a mom and pop shop to a freelancer living job to job will pay more than 15% of their business income in taxes. You might remember that under Cruz's plan it was 16%. Now, in Trump's 
what do you want to call it, in Trump's favor. His is the lowest income tax for business. But he's already said he's going to get rid of, he's going to use this simplify the tax code. You can bet that the government, if he tried to actually pass this, that the Democrats would not allow him to do this, number three, unless he got rid of the write-offs. If you get rid of the write-offs, then actually that's an increase in business income tax. But he doesn't say that he's getting rid of the write-offs and what he's saying there. He's just saying that's your top income tax. for business. And I already told you in the Trump dump Trump dump cruise videos, I already explained that when you pass tax on business income, that means that the, the, the tax rate is going to have to be paid out of customer revenues. So that in essence, you as an individual paying your individual income tax, in order to buy any kind of product that a business sells, you, their, their money to pay their taxes to Uncle Sam is going to come from you. So in effect, your own income tax doubles to the extent that business income is taxed. So Trump, among all the candidates, is the one guy who ought to know that. So why doesn't he reduce it to zero? Why doesn't he reduce the business income tax to zero? Why doesn't he explain what I just told you? He should know that. There's, I, I don't even know anybody who doesn't know that who deals with finance. Everybody knows that business is a pass-through device. And any price that gets paid by the customer includes the taxes that the business pays to the federal government or any other place. The business gets its money from you. So if you tax it, then you're taxing yourself. Duh. So when you pay your utility bill, all those taxes that everybody say that the utilities ought to pay, well, guess who pays those utility taxes? You do. Your gas bill, your phone bill, your, you know, gasoline, all those taxes on all those items. You're the one paying those taxes, not the business. The business can't pay anything. It's getting its money from you or it closes its doors. So how come uh, Trump, the businessman, the business magnet, doesn't know this? But I will say, of all the tax proposals for business that the Republicans are advancing, what you see highlighted in blue right there is the, mo the nicest among them. If, if, if you're still allowed to keep all your deductions. Okay, that, that's how businesses stay afloat. Okay, that one of my jobs is to zero out a corporation every single year so that it has zero income taxes to pay. That way it has enough money to pay for jobs, to pay for equipment, to keep on living the following year. Okay, that's not solely what keeps it going, but it's a major factor for some businesses especially manufacturing. You know, the stuff that you buy in the store, that has to be made by manufacturers. Manufacturers in particular are always cash starved. And what income tax cuts do is they help you have enough cash to operate. All right? So that's the nicest thing I can say about Trump is this part three here. But he doesn't make anything of it, and he doesn't explain the purpose, and he doesn't. You don't hear him talk about hi business income. Businesses should never have income taxes. A dollar of business income taxes is a dollar more you pay when you buy their stuff. So then, don't have any business taxes, so that the cost to you is lower. Duh. That'll really help people get jobs. That's why if you want to talk about a way to stimulate jobs and help the economy, eliminate that altogether. But you don't see him say that. So he doesn't, he doesn't have a proper grasp of true economics. 
Okay? Because that's true in any economy, anywhere in the world, any time in history. He doesn't understand that. Or this, the 15% should have to be zero. Okay? And then we have, and this is just like Cruz and so many others, and this has been, honey, this proposal has been on the books for years. Eliminate the death tax. They, they call it inheritance tax. Eliminate this. Okay? Just eliminate it. That proposal has been on the books, advanced, every single year, like killing Social Security. Okay? That has been proposed every year for at least the 40 years that I know, I know of. You know, I graduated from college four years ago, went to the Hill, okay? And this was, they were proposing to eliminate the death tax then. I got involved with the states and trust law and, you know, taxes as soon as I got out of college. This was a proposal then. You'll notice that it's still a proposal now, and every government can every GOP candidate is proposing what he's proposing here. So at best, you can say he's copying everybody else, because he doesn't have any personal knowledge. It's like his his stereotypes, you know, about blacks and Jews and women's and whites and the blah blah blah. blah. That's all he knows are stereotypes. I don't know if the man has a single thought in him that's original. Okay. The Trump tax is revenue neutral. Really? Prove it. Saying it is true is like saying that, you know, Windows 10 is the greatest operating system on earth. That doesn't make it true. Okay? The Trump tax cuts are fully paid for by. Really? Reducing or eliminating deductions, honey, then, then they're, they're not tax cuts. See, the, the amount of the tax that's left... 10, 20, see, look, 10, 20, 25, that's pretty much the way they are now, okay? And if, and if you have it like that and you eliminate all the deductions available to the very rich, well, then he's a Democrat. He talks like a Democrat. If you tax the rich, then the poor pay more. Where do you think the rich get the money from? If you don't tax the rich, then they have more to spend and more money goes to the poor rather than taxing the poor. See, this is a Democrat's argument. Oh, be greedy. The rich, the rich, the rich. Tax the rich. Yes, and it's the rich who can afford to invest in business. It's the rich who create businesses. And then if they have less money to do so, then there are fewer jobs and the poor get poorer. The same thing as taxing business. Reducing or eliminating most deductions and loopholes available to the very rich. Honey, there aren't any that are available to the very rich that are unavailable to the middle class. In other words, if you take away a deduction that's available to the very rich, you, Mr. Middle Class, lose it too. And it has a bigger impact on your pocketbook than it does on the rich because you're not rich. So this is all just grandstanding. He has no idea what these things do. None. Zero. He's just like a Democrat. He's thinking in terms of stereotypes. He's like Hillary Clinton and Obama. All they know are stereotypes. There's no, there's no actual cogitation and analysis of facts and going on here. None. Zero. And then, a one-time deemed repatriation of corporate cash held overseas has significantly just that blah, 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 blah. Okay? Jeb Bush has a similar proposal. His is 8.75. And our boy is 10%. This only affects like a few businesses. Okay, this he shouldn't even be talking about this. This is like a line item where, you know, it's, it, it, it might make a billion dollars worth of difference. It's not a small amount of money by our standards, but it's a tiny amount of money in terms of the total taxes. Okay. And then, reducing or eliminating corporate loopholes. Okay, what that ends up meaning is that this 15% is flat. Okay? If you reduce or eliminate the so-called loopholes, it could be that most corporations, including the mom-and-pop businesses he's claiming to champion, that they would pay, that they would be paying a higher tax than they are now. 
okay? Much higher. So this is ridiculous. Everything he's saying here, first of all, there's no numbers to back this up. Secondly, you have no proof that this statement is true at all. And these things actually raise taxes, so then they're not tax cuts. If I pay $1,000 in taxes under current law, and if under the Trump law I pay $2,000 in taxes, then they're not tax cuts. I don't care what you call it. Okay? He's not made available anything to prove these points. He's not made anything available to prove this claim. It's just all it's just all smoke and mirrors. Of course, you could say that about the other GOP candidates too. Frankly, I, I'm I'm getting to the point where I don't want to vote for anybody. Okay, details of Tom's tax plan. Where's the details? Okay. Simplifies by taking 50% of the filers off the income tax rolls entirely. Where is that proven? Where is that proven? And like Jeb Bush, he wants to reduce the tax brackets from 7 to 4. So, reduces or limit what loopholes? Very rich? There's no such thing. Okay, this is what's a killer about this lie. He's lying here. There is no deduction available to a very rich person. No deduction in the code at all. Now, there's no deduction a very rich person can get that you can't get. There are deductions for businesses that you can't get unless you were that business. But he's saying very rich. Show me a deduction that the very rich gets that the middle income doesn't get. See, by cutting the deductions and the loopholes to the very rich, they are basically increasing, increasing, increasing the tax on the middle class. This is all one great big lie. Taxes are always designed to hit the middle class the hardest. That's tax policy in the U.S. for the past at least 50 years that I know of. And it's no different here. There is no deduction a very rich person can get that if you took it away wouldn't hurt you more. Period. Because a deduction is based on a, something you buy, something you pay for, okay, something you do with your money. Okay, well those are like generic classes. If you buy a house, if you buy a car, if you buy a boat, if you buy, you know, hospital equipment. So what, only the very rich need a house or a car or hospital equipment? No. Middle income people need those things too. So you take the deduction away from the very rich, you take it away from the middle class, and that's exactly what government policy is designed to do. Because then the middle class ends up paying most of the taxes. That's what it's designed to do. Because the middle class are the most numerous. This is purpose. Go to the Office of Management and Budget and, sh and, have the, and ask for the breakdown of taxes. They publish some big thing every year that you can buy or get, you know, free by download. I haven't looked at it in years. But they have a breakdown of, okay, here are the taxes that we collected. Here's how much certain income groups paid of each kind. Go look at it. Middle, the middle class is designed to be hit the most. And when they do new laws, new changes in tax laws, they analyze is the, well, how much of that tax is going to hit the middle class, how much the upper class, how much the lower class. And they change it based on whether or not the upper class is paying enough. Or the lower class, really, the middle class is paying enough. Because there aren't enough people in the very rich category to make that tax change work. It's got to hit the middle class. So this guy's a liar, or stupid, or both. Okay? Tom tax plan is simpler tax code for all Americans. This, this tells you nothing. This is useless. Okay? Now he summarizes it. Okay, this is what he said before. 
25,000, that's pretty much the way it is today, okay? Bear in mind, you know, we're talking about no deductions now at all, okay? That's pretty much the way it would be under current law with deductions that the government automatically allows you to take for expenses that you normally would have, okay? And then this is 150,000 up. This actually, to be real straightforward, this the people who are rich would benefit the most from this, depending on you know how they take their money, because a lot of them are paying a lot more than 25 percent now. So it doesn't actually benefit the middle class the most. It benefits the rich the most. Okay. It's a long story to explain, all right? With this huge reduction in rates, liar. Many of the current exemptions and deductions will become unnecessary or redundant, liar. Because with the current law, if go grab your tax form, because, you know, it's January. Go grab your tax form. Tax forms are just coming out. And you look at this versus the tax form that you're going to have to fill out. Let's do April 15th. Make a comparison. See for yourself. Pretend you had no deductions and you had this. Would you be better off or worse off? Do it yourself. See for yourself. Because this guy's lying. And he doesn't, he's not even done a proper study to know how the tax impact would be. Business tax reform, blah, 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 blah. But I've already covered this, okay? So you can read the verbiage here if you want. Now, again... In order to be able to read it, you have to, and I don't know how to do this in another browser, Firefox Tools, Options, okay, Content, Colors, Always Override, okay. If you do this one instead, that returns the native colors of the website to you. And as you'll see, and of course, well, i got to get rid of the font too, because I overrode the font as well. Allow the font that's native to the web page. Okay. And now you see what. Now, see, my native font is um, Comic Sans. So if you've got that, I use that because it's easier to read. Okay. But this is how his website would look, except that maybe your font, your font selection here is different. See? Maybe you've chosen a different font. This is how his font looks, and that's at 150. This would be at 100. Okay, look at how terrible this is. Look at how faded the font colors. So it's really hard to read. All right? But this is under Positions, Tax Reform. Go read it yourself. Do that thing, like I said at the bottom, which is going to be very hard to even read now. Okay, compare your tax return that you're going to have to file for 2015 by April 15th. Compare that to this as if you had, see, this will allow you no deductions at all. You have zero deductions for anything. Okay, are you better off under the Trump tax plan or are you better off with current law? If you're better off with current law, then Trump is not a conservative. Okay? He's not. I hate to tell you, but pretty much everybody else, their tax reform proposals are the same thing. Or close. They're all bad. But what I'm trying to do is expose this guy is busy saying, oh, what we've got, here we go. See, this is him championing his own tax plan. Oh, it's the greatest thing since white bread and he will provide tax relief to the middle class. Big lie. And here's how you can prove it yourself. You go down, you look at your own tax return that you got to file for 2015, calculate it under the Trump tax plan with no deductions. So that means whatever your gross income is here, that's what you got to follow. Okay, based on your gross income, not adjusted gross. Okay, and then by contrast, do it using the 1040 EZ that you're getting in the mail or that you can download from irs.gov. 
and see which where your your taxes really last. Ain't gonna be with Trump. But he'll tout it as if it were. The man doesn't know what he's talking about. He's an American Khrushchev. And I ain't voting for him. Now I'll get to other things, but right now I just wanted to stop with that tax plan.